What's up, Greg? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to my channel. This, of course, is another episode of Build a Boy Workshop, because today we're going to be learning how to build a better boy. At least I thought we were, because that's the name of the movie we're going to be watching, but it turns out it's not a tutorial at all. I thought it was going to be. That's the only reason I watched it, but I guess I'm not learning how to build a better boy today. Guess I'm gonna be stuck with this nerd. Hey! I feel like at this point I'm sort of on the world's slowest quest to watch every Disney Channel original movie because I watch one every like four or five months, so I should be done by the time I'm 200 years old. But we're continuing the journey with this movie, How to Build a Better Boy, which came out in 2014. I'd never seen it before, and honestly, compared to the other Disney Channel movies I've watched so far, it's kind of good. I mean, like compared to other movies, it's not good, but compared to other Disney Channel movies, it's got some decently funny parts. It's even got a couple good messages in there, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to complain about it still. So without further ado, let's complain about how to build a better boy. <laughs> We're done in 10 minutes. Nine actually. I appreciate your confidence, Gabby, but you're sophomores and this is senior calculus. Why don't you and May check your work? I don't know why she's so mad at them for being good at math. It's math class and she's the math teacher. Isn't that her job? Isn't that what she wants? Why don't you and May check your work? Yep, still done. Anyways, if you haven't guessed already by the glasses and the fact that these two girls are the main characters in a Disney Channel original movie, these girls are kind of nerds. Gabby and Gabby Jr. Wrecking the curve, as usual. Torks! <laughs> <laughs> um, Miss Shapiro, may we have hall passes? And apparently they go to one of the schools where calling other students nerds right in front of the teacher is totally cool. Kinda weird that the teacher wouldn't jump in to defend them, but... I guess, I mean, I think she thinks that they're nerds too. Now, since May is such a nerdy dork, she spends a lot of her time tutoring the school's biggest jock, Jaden, who's played by probably my favorite teen movie heartthrob, Noah Centaur Ayo. So, the tangent. Wait, why is she drawing a picture of him right in front of him? That's so creepy. And then she like quickly puts it away because she doesn't want him to see it. Like she's startled that he's there. You're tutoring him. Of course he's right there. You didn't... You didn't think he was gonna start talking to you? Also, why does the paper she's writing this on look like that? It looks like an ancient scroll. What's your deal? I mean, social life-wise. Are you going to homecoming? Oh, is, is, is that this weekend? It's the biggest weekend of the year. I, 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 I don't know. Gabby and I like to play it by ear. <laughs> Us and... All of our friends. Is it just me or is this how like 90% of Disney Channel movies start? It's almost like when they sit down to write a Disney Channel original movie, they all already agree that there's going to be a socially outcast girl and the popular boy doesn't even know she exists and she has a crush on him and everyone dresses like a Gap commercial. The only thing they actually have to figure out is where they're gonna take it from there. Maybe she'll start a radio show. Maybe she'll join the musical. Maybe she'll start a band. Maybe her bones are getting squishy. Maybe she'll build a better boy. I know this is gonna sound crazy, I feel like Jaden likes me. He needs you <laughs> to do his problem sets. Mmm, you know he's the coolest kid in school when he doesn't know how to sit at a table. If there's one thing I've learned from watching teen movies, it's that cool kids never sit right. They don't know how. They have to sit on top of the table to express dominance. Or they gotta sit backwards in the chair like this to express dominance. Do you feel dominated right now? Later that day, May gets a text from Jaden saying he has an important question to ask her after school. Jaden texted! And May becomes convinced that he's gonna ask her to homecoming, which Jaden's girlfriend overhears, and she is not happy. What brings you here? <laughs> Jaden invited us. May, you and Jaden aren't even on the same social radar. Why do people even like you? Well, I'm not the one trying to steal someone's homecoming date. I mean, she has a point, right? This is Jaden's girlfriend. They're dating. So like, why would he ask May to homecoming? It does seem a little shady. I don't know if I'm supposed to be rooting for May at this point. She's trying to steal someone else's man. See, here's the social radar. And over here is Siberia. There, that's, that's you. <laughs> I love that one laugh at the end. It sounds like one girl wasn't laughing hard enough so the director pulled out a gun and pointed it at her. <laughs> Jaden and I have been dating for like oh, 17 whole days. And everyone knows it except apparently the school geniuses. <laughs> 
Another thing I've always thought was funny about Disney Channel movies is that they always cast adults to play teenagers. I think they just do that because it's cheaper and easier to work with adults than it is with kids. There's lots of laws around child labor, which I honestly support. I think there should be laws around child labor. But a lot of the time, the adults look way older. Like, look at this crowd of people. Some of these people look 30. What kind of high school is this? High school where everyone got held back 10 years? Hey, Nevea, my bubble is totally unburst because I already have a boyfriend. May, what are you doing? See, my boyfriend, so cute, total hot burger. And, and his name is Albert. Albert! Did she call him a hot burger? Oh, what a gross way to describe someone. Uh, yeah, my boyfriend, he's a steamy, hot, juicy ground beef boy. He's a hot, medium well, pink on the inside, cow meat baby boy on two whole wheat buns. And he's got two whole wheat buns, hun. When can we meet this Albert? Oh, well, he lives in Alaska. <laughs> So I guess the premise of this movie, the hero's journey here, is that May tried to steal this girl's boyfriend and then lied about actually having a boyfriend. So now everyone thinks she has a boyfriend and they all want to meet him and she has to come up with a way to make her boyfriend real. Very likable main character right off the bat. Seems like she lies a lot. Very conniving young girl. Oh, May, congrats on getting owned by Nevada Barnes. Yeah, it is all over our school's website. Wait, it's on the school's website? Like just the, the homepage for the school that's run by faculty? They wrote that shit on the website? Today's top news, congrats to the wrestling team for taking home first place at state. And uh, oh yeah, May, a student here, a 14 year old girl, got fucking owned by the coolest boss ass bitch in school. God damn, she's so cool. But she doesn't even know I exist. Anyways, that's all for now. I have to go grade papers and feed my children because I'm an adult. Like, geez, who's in charge of the school's website? The math teacher? A fake boyfriend? How are we gonna pull that one off? Well, I'm not gonna create an online profile for some pretend boy that's it's just creepy and lame. Yeah, an online profile for a fake boyfriend? That would be creepy and lame. <laughs> So instead they hack into May's dad's computer because he's a game developer working on some advanced AI and use it to create a virtual interactive boyfriend that they can use to fool the entire school. Why don't we invent a better one? What? What if we make you a boyfriend, an interactive virtual boy? So you wanna hack into my dad's secure network and build me some high def boyfriend? Phew, dodged a bullet there, dude. I thought you were gonna do something creepy and lame. The twist, however, is that May's dad doesn't actually work for a game development company. He works for the US military. And the AI he's been developing isn't just for a video game character, it's for a robotic super soldier boy. Super soldier boy? Super... Soldier boy. With this software, Albert could be totally virtual. He could text, call, and video chat all on his own. <laughs> He'll be better than 3D. He'll be 3D-licious. Mm. And he's gonna have 3Ds. Mm. Now, tell me your ideal male human. Well, he'd be tall with brown hair. No, blonde with blue eyes. Meowsers. Blonde hair and blue eyes. Meowsers. Whoa, slow your roll there, May. You're getting a little too kinky. As they're putting in all this information about May's perfect boy, Gabby is entering it into the system, and every time she enters a new quality or some characteristic, the machine that's building the boy shoves like a vial of liquid into the robot's head, which, well, I don't really think that's how robots work in the first place. Like, I don't think that- I don't think programmers just put liquid into the robot. Like, this is brave juice. He want, he needs to be brave. Brave. But I understand that they're just trying to show visually that what they're doing to the robot is having some effect on him. But what doesn't make sense though, is that while May starts by giving characteristics like brave and sensitive, that are pretty common characteristics, and the robot is shoving the brave vial and the sensitive vial in the robot's head, she starts getting a lot more specific. I want him to notice the little things. With just one look, he would know exactly how I feel. I guess that's the knowing exactly how you feel with one look vial of liquid that the military designed. It's just like, how many vials do they have? How many juices did they develop for this robot? Going to homecoming with him wouldn't be awkward or scary like it would be with other boys. And when he walks into the dance holding my hand, it's just perfect and everyone will be watching. Kiss, it'll be the perfect kiss. 
So it's unclear why the system has started overloading. I guess they inputted too much information for the poor robot. Maybe it's too much for one soldier boy to handle. System overload, cuteness factor off the charts. He's too fucking hunky. Okay, there goes the robot into the into the human juice that makes the human. And then here he comes out of his skin bath, the most perfect boy to ever exist. And he gets up, he runs down the stairs, butt ass naked, really fast, and right out the door. And he's gone. Damn, he's really fast. I guess he's in a hurry to accomplish his mission. Gotta smooch my girlfriend. Oh, May, your new boyfriend just added me. Talk about Gorgie Mick Gorgeous. Whew. What? Uh, who created this page? I didn't. He's already connected to half the school. That's kind of a weird first move for the robot to make, right? <laughs> His mission is to make it very clear to the whole school that he's May's boyfriend and he's supposed to take May to homecoming and kiss her. That's his whole mission. And his first move is to friend request the most popular girl in school on social media. Uh, who created this page? Also the picture that he used for his profile picture, he's shirtless. Okay, so I have to make it super clear to everyone at school that I'm May's boyfriend. Step one, and send to everyone except May. Admit it, you created a fake boyfriend profile. No, we didn't. Oh yeah? Prove me wrong. Holy moly, there he is! And he's so cool! Look at those pockets! And just like all the other teens in this movie, he's a grown-ass man. I actually looked it up and at the time of filming this movie, the dude who plays Albert was 25 years old. So not even close to high school age. He could have been out of high school for seven years before filming this movie. So I guess we do have the answer to how to build a better boy. It's just get a man. Get a fully grown man. <laughs> all the boys in my school are such jerks. I wish I had a better boy. A boy like Bruce Willis. There you are. What are you doing here? My dad got transferred from DC. So, let me just get this straight. You and May are dating? No. <laughs> It's more than dating. Okay, if this happened to you in real life, wouldn't you be like terrified? There you are. You design what you think is basically just like a video game character on your dad's computer. And then the next day, some guy who looks exactly like him shows up to your school. And he's like, hey May, it's me, your boyfriend. I've come to life. I'm a real boy now, May. And my mission is to smooch ya. He's just staring at you with his cold robot eyes. Vials of liquid are clanking around in his head. Cause if that happened to me, I'm pretty sure I'd shit my pants. There's lots of dark undertones about him being a robot that kind of creep me out in this movie. Like first off, where did he get the car? and his clothes? Cause he was naked when he came out of the skin bath. He didn't have anything. Where did he get all this stuff? Did he hurt someone? But the girls just sort of go along with it and they're like, well, okay. I guess this is May's boyfriend now. I'm not leaving here until my mission's accomplished. I'm going to kiss May at homecoming. A perfect kiss. And the whole school loves him. He's pretty much May's perfect boyfriend. He rescues the frogs in science class from getting dissected, which May loved. He creates this like private lunch for two on the football field for him and May. I don't know how he's organizing all this stuff and why there's no consequences for any of this stuff from the school. Well, actually I can think of one reason because imagine how a confrontation with the principal would go. All right, buddy. Well, I'm sure you know why I called you down here. You disrupted class on several occasions. You threw a football at a fellow classmate so hard you gave him internal bleeding and you crushed a bully skull between your bare hands. So unfortunately I am going to have to suspend you. Negative. If I'm suspended, I can't go to homecoming. My mission is to mack on my girlfriend at the dance. <laughs> What? You will not stand in my way. Oh, oh, fuck, my spleen. Take off your clothes. What? I don't have any clothes. I need a suit for the dance. Take off your clothes, bitch. Okay, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Bitch. <laughs> mean robot. All right, well, now it's time for Albert to ask May to the dance. How do you think he's gonna do it? A big sign? Maybe writing her name in roses? Nope. It's been said and done. Every beautiful thought's been already sung. I love you like a love song, baby. Yeah, I was not expecting an acoustic cover of a Selena Gomez song to be in this movie, but this movie's full of twists. Sir, the situation has escalated. We now have reason to believe that Black Sigma is after the X-17. Black Sigma? What, what is that, a heavy metal band? <sighs> They're international arms dealers. So the whole movie, the military is trying to get this robot back because he's their property. They designed him. But now apparently there's an international crime organization, Black Sigma, who's also trying to get their hands on Albert. Uh-oh. 
I hope they don't catch him. An international crime organization? That sounds pretty scary for Albert. Ah! Oh, so he's... So he's just gonna kill him. And he's dead. Okay, well, I guess he's fine. Alaska! Shoot up! Nipples! So Black Sigma uses this machine that like powers him down for a second, which apparently causes him to forget his mission. And he just like zooms off to go do his default mission, apparently, which is protecting the world from danger or something. He's just like fighting crime around the world. Albert's system was temporarily shut down last night by an electro pulse device. He returned to his default mission. Saving the free world from danger. He's forgotten all about his mission to kiss May. And I know what you're thinking. Thank God. But then the dance rolls around. May shows up to homecoming alone, obviously. But then somehow Albert shows up and just like goes to the dance with her. I'm sorry I'm late. Worry? I never had a doubt. Uh huh. Why is he there? I thought he was doing his default mission. He's not programmed to be doing this anymore. Why is he doing this? This robot is like going rogue to take this girl to homecoming and smooch her. He's like, look, I know this isn't my mission anymore. I'm just doing this one for me. I'll be damned if I get cheated out of my homecoming smooch. Then Maywin's homecoming queen, and of course, since it's a Disney Channel original movie, it has to have that scene at the end where the main character gets embarrassed in front of the whole school or a large group of people, and then the whole audience has to join in and cheer for her to, to show that they support her. So that happens. I think they should have used a different mirror for this shot. Like her face looks all smushed. Anyway, so the dance is going perfect. It's time for their big kiss. But May actually decides at the last second that even though this is exactly what she thought she wanted, it feels different in the moment. And so she doesn't want to kiss Albert. I can't. It's honestly a nice moment. I think it sets a good example for kids. It's a good message. Like, hey, don't feel pressured into doing things you don't want to do. And just because you said you wanted to do something before doesn't mean you want to do it now. And wait until things feel right. Do things at your own pace. All that's fine. What happens next, however, is very confusing. So I didn't mention it before, but the military is at the homecoming dance trying to make the kiss happen so that Albert can forget about the kiss and just go back to being the military's property and doing what they want him to do, what they designed him to do. But when May decides she doesn't want the kiss after all, instead of going back to the military, this happens. Initiate self-destruct. He tells her to tell him to self-destruct so that he doesn't have to go back to working for the army. But like, why? <laughs> He's a robot. He's not supposed to have any say in the matter. He's just programmed to do things. Why should, why doesn't he want to work for the army? They never explain it either. They just kind of agree like, okay, so you're not going to kiss me. Might as well blow you up then. Better that than you doing your job, what you were designed to do. Sure, they might've sunken billions of dollars into developing you, but if you're not going to kiss me, then you might as well be dead. You might as well die now. And then he just blows up. And, but well, actually he doesn't really blow up. He just sort of shoots off into the sky. So I don't know if he's still alive or what happened, but at least he's not working for the military. And folks, that's pretty much the end of how to build a better boy. Anyways, thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Guys, if you wanna get mouthwatering seasonal recipes and fresh pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door, then try out HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Laura and I started using HelloFresh a while ago and we absolutely love it. Pretty much every meal they've sent us has been a hit, so tasty, and also so easy to make. They cut out all the prepping and planning, they send you exactly what you need for each meal so that you can just focus on making the meal and get dinner on the table in as little as 30 minutes, sometimes even 20 with their quick and easy options. They make it really easy to live healthy and according to your diet with low calorie options, carb smart options, vegetarian and pescatarian options. There's something for pretty much everyone. Something that I really like about HelloFresh is that they're a pretty sustainable option. In fact, HelloFresh's carbon footprint is actually 25% lower than meals made from store-bought groceries. It's flexible to fit your lifestyle. Sometimes the floor and I are too busy for HelloFresh. We just skip it for a week. You can also add dinners or lunches or extra stuff like garlic bread. And overall, they just seem like a great company. They've donated millions of meals to charity and they're stepping up their donations even more amid the COVID crisis. So just more reasons to love HelloFresh. So if you want to try it out, then go to HelloFresh.com and use my code 10 truly greg to get 10 meals for free plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com and code 10 truly greg to get 10 free meals plus free shipping. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and thank you to you guys for checking out HelloFresh. All right guys, well that's the end of the video. If you liked it and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg. Greg's not just like any other boy named Greg. 
Greg is a better boy. And if you want to be Greg, all you have to do is subscribe and turn on my notifications. Okay, well, bye. This video is over now. Yeah. Over now. Go find something else to watch. Or just watch this video. I again. know we had a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. Woo. But you can't stay on this end screen forever. No. This video is over now. Yeah. Over now. So why are you still watching this?